Welcome back to the big Saturday show. Now, Corinne Jean-Pierre wrapping up her first official uh, week as White House press secretary. And with many fumbles and failures, just watch this. How does raising taxes on corporations lower the cost of gas, the cost of a used car, the cost of food for everyday Americans? So look, I think we encourage those who have done very well, right, especially those who care about climate change, uh, to support a fair ta tax code and not let this, this, that stand in the way of reducing energy costs and fighting this ex existential problem. So if it's pausing because you think the board was mischaracterized, then the disinformation board is being shut down because of disinformation? Is that what's happening here? Look, I mean, the, the board was put forth for a purpose, right, to make sure that we really did, a t a, uh, really did address what was happening across the country when it came to disinformation. But the work, does, the work doesn't stop. Nothing has changed on how we see the stock market. Uh, we do not, that's not something that we keep an eye on. Wow, I mean, the only thing she didn't do was circle <laughs> back there to somebody on that from her predecessor. But look, this is no laughing matter. This is the press secretary of the most powerful nation on earth. She's supposed to represent the president of the United States. And she didn't read the job description, apparently, the way Jen Snarky didn't. Ladies, first, I'm going to go to you, because she touts herself as the first black gay immigrant woman. Let's play this and then go to two ladies with, well, resumes. My presence at this podium uh, represents a few firsts. Uh, I am a black gay immigrant woman, the first of all three of those to hold this position. If it were not for generations of barrier-breaking barrier people before me, I would not be here. And those groundbreaking people, those ceiling breakers, came from all backgrounds, all spectrums. Uh, Nicole, this is a woman who went to an elitist school, to an elitist uh, college. This is someone who came from a background of, shall we say, privilege. The color is obvious she's black. Nobody really cares that she's gay in America because they just don't. But, Nicole, she's touting her obvious and the things not related to the job. I mean, you couldn't do that as a physician, could you? Uh, well, so certainly not. You know, it's okay that she is proud of those those things that make her who she is, and her role right now is one to be admired. It is uh, certainly a, quite an achievement to get there. But I can tell you, you know, when you listen to her speak right now, um, you got, I was kind of wondering how the messaging was going to go from Jen Psaki into now. But unfortunately, you still have that same condescension coming out of the Biden administration. The, when she was asked about the, uh, you know, what's the White House, how are they looking at the stocks and the fact that everything is, you know, going pretty poorly in our country right now, and uh, she responded, oh, we don't really pay attention to that. I mean, they are just so out of touch with reality, with Americans and what is important to them. When, you know, Peter asked the questions, you know, we're concerned about gas prices. We can't get formula. We can't get a lot of things that we are used to getting every time we go to the grocery store or the hardware store. We have massive supply chain in issues and we are at this point struggling to afford anything at this point and yet they laugh it off again and uh, unfortunately this Democratic Party just continues to be extremely out of touch with Americans. I think that's going to show up in the midterms. You know, Joe, you know a thing or two about media. Objectively analyze how she's doing in the job. Amateur hour. David, it's the only way you can describe it. Uh, she had two press briefings this week by design because they knew the president would be going away, so she didn't have to do the five press briefings. Uh, it, it's a hard job. Look, it's arguably one of the hardest white-collar jobs anyone can have out there, especially with this president, where she's the spokesperson. Uh, you're forced to defend the indefensible on a daily basis. Uh, but the conclusion comes from watching this press secretary read answers to questions, oftentimes for extended periods of time, verbatim. And sometimes she reads from a card that has zero to do with the question. She even had to, just introducing herself, who she is, had to read her own biography from a card. The confidence simply is not there, nor is the conviction. I mean, when she's answering some of these questions, it's just like we see with Kamala Harris. It's just like a high school student putting together a series of sentences in order to achieve the mandatory word count on a term paper. You know, so I, I think that it's going to get better for her, maybe kind Kind of, sort of, but in the end, John Kirby was by far, from the Pentagon, by far the best choice for this job. And he's going over to the White House now, and he will serve as a backup to Jean-Pierre when she doesn't do her uh, press briefings. And you'll see a significant improvement. But he wasn't chosen for reasons. I'll let you fill in the blank, guys. Mm -hmm.
You know, Jackie, I hear you play a journalist once in a while on TV, but in all <laughs> seriousness, this is not about whether she's a woman or not. It's about whether she answers questions. You know, from your point of view, like Peter Ducey's point of view or other journalists, can you imagine what it must be like to ask a question of someone who doesn't answer and you don't get a redirect? There are a lot of problems here, David, and, and that is one of them. The fact that she's reading these answers out of a binder. I'm also, I'm not only a journalist, but I'm a student of the stock market, too. And so her answer was particularly frustrating to me. I'll read it to you guys again. Nothing has changed on how we see the stock market. We do not, that's not something that we keep an eye on. Well, here's a stat for her that somebody can put in her little binder. As of Friday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average saw its first eight-week losing streak since 1932, and we all know what was happening in the early 30s in this country. That is 90 years ago. Now, we've heard press sec secretaries get up on the podium and occasionally say if there's one big day of movement in the market, they don't pay attention to little fluctuations. But let's talk about the U.S. stock market this week, down 2.9 percent. The S&P was down 3 percent. The Nasdaq down 3.8 per two, 3.82 percent. And year-to-date, the numbers are even worse. The Dow down down 13 percent, the Nasdaq down 27 percent, and the S&P 500 down 18 percent. I'm not talking about protecting hedge funds that invest in the market here. I'm talking about mom and pop who invest in their 401k, and they have seen massive wealth destruction since January. These people deserve a real answer, not we don't watch that. Thank you, Jackie. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.